internet. I am Magnifica Sylvie La Chandonniere. I am a Laurel in the SCA in the West Kingdom. And I want to talk today about uh, another book. Um, the book is not really a one-stop shop. So far I've been, I've been doing one-stop shop. So I did Medieval Tailor Assistant. And then uh, we did uh, Tudor Tailor. And then jumped back and did Woven Into the Earth, which is early period and about as close as a one-stop shop as I can currently find. Um, but now I want to kind of uh, veer off course a little bit. Um, a couple years ago, and offhand I don't know exactly when, I'd have to go look it up, um, I made a post on my status on Facebook. And I said that someday I want my garb to hang like a well-made suit. I, I had just uh, watched a couple of videos about uh, bespoke tailoring and suits that cost $9,000 and are worth every penny. And I've never, I've never had clothes like that. I've definitely never known how to make clothes like that. So I started asking the internet. I said, hey, internet, because you guys are great. I said, how, how do I, how do I up my garb game? How do I, how do I make it all better? And uh, there were a couple of different answers. I, I, I went browsing around for a couple different books and I, I looked around on Amazon. And one of the nice things about Amazon is it will show you a book and then at the very bottom, it will say, hey, people who are interested in this book were also interested in these. And so I found a couple of books to buy, and I'm sure they'll come up in the future. But Amazon suggested uh, the book we're going to talk about today, which is The Modern Maker, Volume 1. But on Amazon, it is listed as men's 17th century doublets. And I looked at that, and being a, a very good SEA person, I went, oh... Oh, no, 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 17th century, that's post-period. I don't want 17th century. We go 600 to 1600. So 17th century is 1600-something or 1620-something, and that's post-period. So I don't want that. And so I avoided, and I didn't buy the book, and I didn't look further into it because, well, Amazon said, hey, this is great for what it is, but it didn't really tell me that I was missing out. Um, I happen to be reading on uh, the Facebook group Elizabethan Costuming, which if you're not on there, you should totally contact me and figure out how to get on there. It is now a private group, which is hard to get into, but it is totally worth it. Um, there are uh, fabulous people in there who are absolute treasures. Um, and somebody on that group mentioned, oh, yes, I'm working with the modern maker. I didn't know what that meant. And... Somebody suggested that if you're interested in tailoring methods, you should look at the modern maker. Uh, and it, it turns out that the author, Matthew, uh, and I'm going to garble this here. I'm fairly certain it's Matthew Nagy, but um, I haven't seen it except for written down, so mileage may vary. Uh, so anyway, they, they mentioned that mundanely he had started off as a modern tailor and had uh, done historical costuming and had looked at the things that people were seeing in, in uh, costuming and, and noticed that archaeologists are not tailors. And so there are things that tailors do that are sort of hidden in between the layers in, in the clothing that might not have been noticed and, and people might not know how to recreate it. So he has been in the SA for quite a long time. Uh, he, I don't have his name at the fingertips, um, but he's a Laurel, I believe, out of the, the New York area. And he's now written uh, three costuming books and, uh, well, technically two knitting books, but uh, only one knitting book under the name Modern Maker. Um, but anyway, so when I, when I found out about it and was directed to this book, um, I, I, the volume one was the only book that was out and I bought the book and it came in and I read through it and reading through it, I honestly, it, it was the most revelational thing that I had ever read, uh, as far as tailoring, uh, and uh, I'll get into why. So let's, let's change over to the book. So here we have, uh, it's Modern Maker volume one, uh, and, uh, men's doublet. So the, the first book, the volume one, uh, is examining a man's doublet. And this is 
it is 16th century, late 16th century. Um, so I believe he's working in some cases off of the Alcega tailoring manual, which is 1589. Um, I know that some of the other patterns that he works on come from as late as 1640. Uh, after sort of tossing this back and forth, I've, I've come to the decision that uh, tailoring did not spring like Athena from the head of Zeus, and that uh, pieces of this existed before the 16th century. And so um, the, the books here um, are really great for helping you to determine uh, what what you can do and sort of giving you a guidepost to guide you through it. So anyway, let's let's get into the book. So what we have, uh, we have Modern Make Your Volume 1, uh, and this goes through a men's doublet. And, and I will admit, initially I discarded the book and wasn't going to get it because I, I'm not a man and I don't want to make a doublet. Um, but it turns out that the information in here uh, sort of goes beyond doublets. Uh, so he, he starts off the introduction and then he goes into the principles of tailoring. Uh, and I really cannot emphasize enough to read through these. These have been very, very thoughtfully written uh, to give you um, just uh, to give you the secrets of tailoring. Um, I, I don't believe there is anything that is it is off the cuff or not very carefully considered. Uh, so he has information about the trade, the body position, what type of needle to use, uh, and then putting everything in its proper place. Then for the section of the book, we go into fabrics, and he's talking about linens, silk, melton. Uh, he has images here showing the, the different fabrics side by side. And then we get into the making of the pattern. And, and so here, here we get to the thing, the thing that absolutely made me lose my mind, and that is the Barra tape. Um, the the Barra tape is mentioned in Alcega. Uh, in fact, from what I understand, it's explained in Alcega. I don't speak Spanish, and I don't have a copy of the, the reprint of the Alcega, um, but it is explained there, and the explanation that, that Matthew goes through here was like, honestly, like the sun rising in the morning. Uh, so he goes through um, this section. He has the tools you're going to be using for drafting. I'll include a link because I am that person. I went and got the exact same uh, ruler, so I'll include the link to them in case you want to pick a setup. Uh, and then he goes through how you make a bar of tape. Um, I had always heard that um, a bara was a medieval yard. So modernly, our yard is 36 inches. In the Middle Ages, they had this thing they called the bara. It's 33 inches. So when you see anything written in baras, you have to sort of convert the 33 inches to 36 inches to get any usefulness out of it. That's, that's what I've been told. Um, it turns out that's, uh, at least uh, according to, to the explanation that Matthew goes through, utterly and completely simplistic. Um, so instead, uh, his his description here um, goes through and describes the bara as a measurement that is related to a single client. So, for instance, I would have a bara tape for my chest measurement. I would uh, then use that if I were, say, a, an actual tailor, uh, and I would be able to use that in order to draft a garment that would completely fit me. And if we had, say, say Twiggy, some very small person, which I am not, and we had a tape that was their measurements, then using just that one tape, a master tailor could then craft an entire garment for that person. Uh, so the, the section here goes through how to take the measurements on a person and then how to convert that measurement into a tape. Um, and I'm not going to go through here. Um, I, I I cannot emphasize how much I believe you should purchase his books. Um, I believe he does also have a video available showing how you go through and make a bar of tape. So once we have the tools and we have the bar of tape laid out, then he goes through how to draft a doublet. And this is a, a late period doublet. Um, I believe it's based on Alcega. I don't have that at my fingertips. Uh, but he very, very carefully goes through exactly how to start at the baseline how to draft it at the different points, what measurements to put at each of those points, and how to draw the shapes in order to get a doublet that is fitted for 
uh, whoever you're making this for. Um, medievally, a master tailor would then work up a pattern off of one or possibly a, a tape and uh, an information about a client's height. Um, because we are not master tailors, um, luckily uh, Matthew goes through and converts this to use three or four tapes based on your chest, your waist, um, your cape length. Uh, and then in some cases, well, not in this book, but in the next one, uh, he goes through and uses a hip measurement, uh, which is really helpful when drafting, uh, say, breeches or a skirt. So he goes through how to draft the pattern, how to do the collar, how to do the skirting that goes on to the bottom of the doublet, how to do conversions if you have somebody, say, that has a large belly versus a small chest or a large chest versus a small belly. Uh, how to how to convert this for different sized different proportioned figures. Finally, he goes into how to cut out the pieces, um, and he has how to lay it out, how to cut them out, how to cut out the uh, interlining in the front canvas, how to attach the uh, outer fabric to the canvas. Uh, he goes through padding the canvas uh, so that you can get a proper stiff look like you would have on these late period garments and then uh, how to then lay this out so that you're ready for the next section which is where he goes through hand sewing techniques of how to sew this garment together uh, and uh, this is entirely based on hand sewing the garment uh, so in this case he lays out what the different threads are that you're going to be using and uh, what you would look for modernly to to recreate these he goes through samples of how you do the stitches. We have basting stitch, running stitch. Uh, we have the whip stitch, what it looks like on the wrong side and on the right side. Uh, we have pad stitching and diagonal basting uh, to show how those would be done. Uh, and then he goes through how to do um, the pad stitching in order to add dimension to, say, the canvas that you're adding, because these are, again, late period garments, which have a lot of, uh, they have a lot of structure to the garment itself, and that was achieved through um, pad stitching and steaming and stretching these pieces of fabric. Uh, he has examples from the v &A of a period garment where the same method was used. Uh, let's see, prick stitching, back stitching, cross stitching, uh, felling stitch in order to, which is going to be used to attach the lining. So he goes through individually how to do each of these stitches. And then oh, we have a nice long section about buttonholes. Buttonholes, buttonholes, buttonholes. How to make the buttons. And finally, so now that we've gone through how to make the pattern, how to cut out the pattern from all the different fabrics, he finally gets to where we're going to make this up. And so he goes through how to put the pieces together, the exact steps you need to go through with explanation of what you're doing at each of the steps. Uh, we have here a diagram that shows how you are going to attach the outer fabric to the canvas. Uh, this is being basted and stretched so that the outer fabric and the canvas end up the same size without any ripples. Um, nice explanations going through that. He goes through how to attach the collar, I mean, excuse me, how to assemble the collar and then how to attach the collar to the garment. Um, with each of the steps, here's how you attach it, here's the seam that you use to attach it, here's the prick stitches. I, I don't know. I don't know if you can actually see that. Yeah. You should get the book. It's a great picture. So, uh, here's how you put the garment together. Uh, then he goes into, we're doing the, the center back seam. He has uh, a side seams that he's putting together. And then he goes through how to finish the skirts, um, how to attach the uh, eyelets, which would then be used to attach the, the breeches. So that those uh, function, function essentially as a single garment. Uh, we go through how to finish uh, the edges. In this case, he's finishing the collar with an edge of silk. Uh, how to make up the sleeves. Um, these are then lined sleeves, and at this point he's doing the canvas and the outer fabric, and then he adds the, um, he adds the, what do you call it, a facing? I don't know if facing is the right word here. 
uh, it's silk that is set on the edge, which is going to have eventually buttonholes worked in it. Uh, and then over top of that, he sews in the lining inside the sleeve, how to attach the ep epaulets, the little tabs that go on top of the sleeves. All right, so we go through finishing off the sleeves. We're attaching the sleeves to the garment. Uh, we're attaching the sleeves and then adding a uh, cover over top of that, I believe, a bias piece of lining, linen long enough to go around the armhole. Yeah, so we're covering up the raw uh, seam allowance at this point. Uh, and then he goes through how to attach the thread colored buttons that he showed us how to make earlier. And finally, uh, the doublet is complete. So after completing the doublet, he shows finished pictures, the exterior, the interior, and then another chart of the back interior. And then he has a section going through surviving garments where he shows uh, examples and where on these examples you would see the same uh, construction steps that he's gone through in his, uh, in his doublet that is detailed earlier in the book. Um, I, I cannot emphasize enough how much this book changed my costuming game. Uh, it, it, it took it from, let's see, it took it from I play in the SCA and I, I make some garments to I, I actually can say that I'm doing tailoring. I'm not good at it. <laughs> I'm still working at getting good at it, uh, but... Uh, it is something that has definitely, it, it pushed my game forward significantly. Um, if nothing else, the section about using the bara tapes and making scale patterns, um, that has been absolutely mind-blowing for me. Um, this is volume one, and I'm going to finish this video on this one, and I think the next video I'm going to do is going to go through volume two, and then I'll probably wrap it up with volume three. Um, I, I recommend buy them all. You know, I think you should buy them all. Uh, if you're only going to get one, then I'd have to say volume two. And that's only because volume two has more than just the one pattern. Volume one is fabulous. It has the pattern for making a doublet, um, which is great if you're, say, a guy and you want to wear a doublet. Um, it's also really great because it spends a lot more time going through this, the exact steps that are made in order to make up the garments. But as a woman, I find volume two more helpful to me because it has the patterns that I can actually use. Um, so that's that's the reason why I'd step back and I'd say, um, get them all. Um, so if you're going to get only one, get volume two. Um, volume three goes into a lot more detail on uh, the the hand stitching, how it should be worked. It's, it's sort of a standalone uh, book about hand stitching. And uh, it's, it's equally indispensable. Uh, thank you very much. I am, as always, Magnifica Sylvie La Chardonnière. If you have any questions, please contact me. I'd love to hear from you. Bye.